But it turns out that the kind of praise or feedback that we receive can actually undermine our performance. We all suffer from fixed mindset. That fixed mindset can really hijack our emotional response. And the great news is we can also modify those core beliefs simply by changing the feedback that we give ourselves. Rewarding yourself for effort is the best way to improve performance. It's machinery that exists in your brain and nervous system and body that you can engage that time and any time. That's growth mindset in action. We grow up hearing from time to time that we are smart, that we are talented, that we are a good athlete, that we are a good artist. But it turns out that the kind of praise or feedback that we receive that attaches our identity to performance can actually undermine our performance. That's right. If you are somebody who performs well in school or athletics or music, and you are told that you are very smart, that you're an excellent student, that you're an excellent athlete, or that you're an excellent musician, you have much to lose if you at any moment do not perform well. And that's because your identity has been integrated with your performance. Somewhat counterintuitively, growth mindset is the process of distancing your identity from performance and rather attaching your identity and your efforts and your sense of motivation to effort itself and to the process of enjoying learning and getting better at learning anything. Growth mindset is the idea that we can get better at things. And at the core of growth mindset is the idea that our brains can change, and indeed they can. It can change for the worse, of course, through injury or disease, things of that sort, but it also can change for the better through deliberate, focused bouts of learning. We can learn new languages, we can learn art, we can learn music, we can get smarter, we can get better at essentially anything if we devote our attentional resources to learning those things. You could ask yourself, for instance, what have I told myself I'm really good at? And what have I told myself I'm really bad at? You should also be thinking about where the messages of being good at something or being bad at something arrive from. Did they arrive from outside you, meaning from your parents, from your coaches, from your teachers? And ask yourself to what extent your labels, that is your identity, is attached to the things that you are good at or bad at. Whether or not we get feedback that is attached to our identity, like a label, like smart or great athlete or talented, sends us down a very different path of performance in the short and long run as compared to whether or not we receive feedback that's based on effort, meaning you tried really hard or you really seem to apply yourself under conditions where you're getting the right answer over time because you simply refuse to quit. Those two divergent forms of feedback get integrated into our core beliefs about what we think is possible for us in a given endeavor. And the great news is we can also modify those core beliefs simply by changing the feedback that we give ourselves. I would have thought, and I think many people probably believe, that if you tell a child or an adult that they're really good at something and you're genuine about that feedback, meaning they're performing well, and you say, great, you're doing really well, you're so smart, you're so talented, that their performance would continue to improve, that it would bolster their motivation to engage in that activity, which hopefully they enjoy, wouldn't that serve to elevate performance? It does not. In fact, the exact opposite happens. So I'll just give you a few of the key takeaways from this study. They essentially gave feedback about performance that was linked up with a child's intelligence, telling a kid they're smart, they're talented, that they can learn things really easily, um, or that they're very good at learning, this sort of thing. And they called that intelligence feedback. Or they gave them what was called effort feedback. The simple way to think about effort feedback is that it's more attached to verbs as opposed to labels. So effort feedback consists of things like, you tried really hard on that problem. It was great the way that you applied effort. It was great the way that you persisted. It was great the way that even when you got the wrong answer, you spent 10 minutes thinking about it and then you tried again and again. So I'll just highlight a few examples of what they found. First of all, the kids that got the intelligence-based feedback, when they were then later offered problem sets that were either challenging or were of the sort that they knew they could perform well on, they tended to select problems that they knew they could perform well on. Whereas the kids that got feedback about their strong effort, when later presented with problems that were either easy or hard, more often than not, they picked the harder problems that stood to teach them more. So that's striking. It says that if you tell a kid that they're smart or talented and that's the reason why they perform well, 
When they encounter challenges, they are likely to go with the least amount of challenge so that they can continue to receive that praise or feedback. Whereas if you receive praise and feedback for your strong effort, then later you tend to pick environments, problem sets, etc., that allow you to exert the very effort that got you the praise in the first place. Okay, so this is a bi-directional effect where giving intelligence praise reduces performance and giving effort praise improves performance, which is absolutely striking and tells you everything you need to know, which is rewarding yourself for effort is the best way to improve performance. Rewarding yourself based on identity labels, so smart, so talented, you're a great athlete, etc. All that stare in the mirror and do self-affirmation stuff can actually undermine performance. And in fact, it does undermine performance. It may not do it right away, but eventually it does. When we attach performance labels to things that we are really good at, we internalize that sense of self. Oh, I'm good at this particular thing. Well, if you internalized a sense of identity around performing well at that thing, and then at some point you don't perform well, you will also attach your identity to that diminished performance. Whereas if you attach effort, verbs, to why you got good at something, as well as why you are not good at something, well then there's only room for improvement. Why do I say that? Well, when we're talking about effort, we're talking about verbs, that is inherent to you. If you did it in one context, you can do it in another. The point being that when you think about the effort processes that you've engaged before and over and over again, that allows you to continue to get better in a given domain, even when, or perhaps we should say, especially when you stop getting the results you want or you start getting poor results. And that effort process of practicing a lot, many repetitions, analyzing why you didn't get something right, that can be engaged in a lot of different endeavors across domains, as we say. So when we talk about verbs like effort or persistence or practicing a lot or analyzing errors and why you did something incorrectly and then getting back to the drawing board, as it's called, when you start to think about your successes and your failures through those lenses, through the lens of verbs, then you're really talking about something that's central to who you are. It's how you're wired. It's machinery that exists in your brain and nervous system and body that you can engage that time and any time. We all suffer from fixed mindset. All suffer from fixed mindset in certain endeavors. And when we get things wrong, especially when there's some embarrassment or shame, which often accompanies when we think we were very right, we're convinced we're right, that fixed mindset can really hijack our emotional response. But at those moments, if we think, okay, I'm gonna step back from that and I'm gonna just think about the error. I'm gonna think about what led to the error and I'm gonna start devoting my attentional resources to that process. That process itself can be built up over time such that we start to outweigh the fixed mindset with growth mindset simply by devoting our attentional resources to the error acknowledging it happened, maybe feeling something about it, maybe not. It's really hard to control our feelings. What we can control, as I mentioned before, is our effort and our attention. So focusing our attention on why we got something wrong and really digging into that, that's growth mindset in action. Building up a practice, a capacity of focusing on one's effort, on focusing on the errors one made, and really trying to understand what led to those errors is the basis. It's the cornerstone of building up growth mindset. 